What's up everyone? I'm your female otaku and I'm here to give you some 2020 manga recommendations. I'm so happy. I've never done a video like this before. However, since this year we started incorporating a podcast, monthly manga cast, for those of you who don't know. One of you guys actually suggested that I make a video of giving you the 2020 manga recommendations. So I'm like, yeah, I got time. Over the past year and a half, I would say I started reading more manga to the point where I now read more manga than I do watch anime. Except for this past season though, but I think we can all give each other a pass on that. I will be breaking the rules just a little bit as there are some series that I will be recommending that came out last year, but this is my first time making one of these videos in general, so I hope that's another thing you can give me a pass on. Although we do have to give a sweet farewell to the following manga series that ended this year. Demon Slayer, Promise Neverland, Haikyuu, Time Paradox Ghost Rider. All wonderful series that we had to say farewell. Thank you for your service. With all that said, let's get started. First up we have How Do We Relationship? I believe the manga came out in Japan last year and so Viz picked it up this year and started translating it. There's currently two volumes out and I have both of them and I absolutely adore the series. Thank God it's being picked up by Viz because Viz is always on their game when it comes to picking up manga and releasing the translations as fast as possible. <coughs> Again, press. <laughs> How Do We Relationship is one of the better Yuri manga series out there. Since a lot of you guys know, Bloom Into You ended this year, so you know. There ain't that many good ones left. How Do We Relationship sets in college with Miwa and Psycho. Both of them are closeted lesbians, but later find out that they are both lesbians. So, because there's no one else who's out around them, they decide to date each other. And this is their first serious relationship. They've had relationships before in the past, but this is the first time where it's more serious. They're telling people that they trust that they're dating, and they're not too sure exactly what the right steps are in a relationship, especially a relationship like theirs. And so I really like how it handles this because it's trying to show people like, hey, they're just a normal couple. Obviously, they're there are some questions here and there. There's this one funny gag that goes on throughout the manga where whenever they tell a guy that they're together, the guy's just all like, hey, so how do girls do it exactly? It's the funniest thing, I absolutely love it. And of course, this takes place obviously in Japan, so there are a bit more complications and a bit more fear you can tell when it comes to telling people that they're together. Not to say that this is the most serious handling of that. There is another manga that I will be recommending that does uh, way more uh, hard to read because of that. But it is a delightful manga. There's a bunch of sweet moments here as well and I just like to see me some soft gay lesbians in college. Wodakoi. The Wodakoi manga has been out for quite some time. However, after two long years of waiting, volume four is finally here. This volume kept on getting delayed and delayed and delayed. I swear this, this volume got delayed a solid three times, but it's here, so. Thank, thank God. It's still absolutely amazing. If you wanna pick up the manga where the anime left off, make sure you start with volume three and then you can carry on from there. But how they do it is that they do it in the omnibus format. So they combine two of the Japanese volumes into one English volume. You're gonna uwu at all the wonderful cute moments and you might shed a tear here and there because it's just, oh, it's just so good. And come on, adult otaku. We love seeing it. I'm an adult otaku, most of you guys are, so you know what, it's just, it's just the grand old time. The Way of the House Husband. Some of you may want to hold off on this because it was just confirmed to have an anime series. A lot of people said that there's also a live action series, but that is incorrect. Those are just skits adapted from the manga to help advertise the manga. But the guy who played Tatsu in the live action commercials is gonna be voicing Tatsu in the anime. I believe the anime is confirmed to be from licensed by Netflix, so it might take a hot second for it to get here in the US. But there are currently four volumes out of The Way of the House Husband and it is, it is such a hilarious ride. If you don't wanna read the manga and you wanna hold out for the anime, I do at least recommend checking out the live action commercials. That'll give you a pretty good taste as to what you're getting into and it is just fan freaking fantastic The Way of the House Husband is about Tatsu, an ex-Yakuza leader who is just living his days 
as a house husband. You do get to see his wife and his wife is an absolute darling and it's just the first chapter really sells you on it. Like, I don't understand how anyone can drop this series after reading the first chapter. Like, come on, it, it's too good. It's so funny. Normally, it, it's hard for me personally to get into sketch comedy manga, but this one, hold up, is, is a good one. I don't have a physical copy of this one, but I have been keeping up with it on vizmedia.com, and that is Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, obviously, I started Jujutsu Kaisen because I could not wait for the next episode of the anime. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can blame Gojo Satoru for that one. The manga has been around since, I believe, 2017, and they started publishing volumes in 2018, I believe, but I only started reading it this year, so that's why it is in this video. Jujutsu Kaisen is such a wonderful, Ride, oh my gosh. I don't know where the anime is gonna specifically leave off. I have an idea of what arc they're gonna leave off on, but I can't give you the specific chapter so that you can go ahead and read on it into the manga. But for right now, the manga is so awesome. I, I love it to bits, okay? It, it's definitely a good filler since I don't have Demon Slayer to read anymore, because again, it ended. You know, it's just that supernatural type action shonen. You got people fighting each other. You got people using their supernatural techniques, the sorcery and stuff. And then, and then it's 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 you got you got the hot looking guys who look kind of ugly in the manga, but in the anime they look so pretty. So I can look past that because I know how they really look like in the anime. And it's just. Cool. While the art may not be the best when it comes to the character designs, it really shines when it comes to the demons. The demons are truly grotesque to the point where the anime has done some slight censorship when it comes to at least the aftermath of Mahito's transfigurations. It's just brutal stuff. It really is. Where I'm at now, I'm in the middle of the Goodwill arc, so I'm sure the art style has picked up since then. Very similar to the Promised Neverland. The Promised Neverland art style was absolute garbage in the beginning, but it turned out to be really pretty towards the end. So I I'm sure the same thing has happened with Jujutsu Kaisen, especially since this manga has been going on for two and a half years. But yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. I love it. Check it out if you can. Remember when I talked about a serious manga I would be recommending to you? Here it is. I'm surprised I haven't made a full video on this yet, but technically all the volumes, they are out, but they were all released last year. But the final volume was released at the end of last year. So you know what? I'm just going to squeeze it in right now. This is without a doubt one of my top favorite manga series of all time. My number one, without a doubt, is A Silent Voice. So I guess Our Dreams at Dusk, it might be like top three material. I would have to really think about it, but this is just fantastic. You have Tatsuku, a high schooler who is in the closet and he is unfortunately outed at school. Thinking about ending his life, he ends up stumbling across a LGBTQ drop-in center. At the drop-in center, he ends up befriending all the fellow LGBTQ plus members, and he ends up feeling more comfortable with himself. And again, this is a way more serious take on what it's like being a part of the LGBTQ community in Japan. It's very rough. There's so much more fear. Volume 1 is definitely the hardest volume to get through. This one's certainly the most depressing, the absolute roughest to get through. But once you get through it, you'll find an absolutely beautiful tale of these, I think there's like five or six of them, uh, characters coming together and literally building a community. It's interesting seeing the other reactions from people who are not a part of the community versus people who are. And of course, Tatsuku is new and he's also struggling to really accept himself. So he even finds himself kind of insulting the other members of the community because he just doesn't understand. He doesn't understand what it's like to be trans. You know, just because he's gay doesn't mean he under automatically understands what it's like to be trans. There's a member who's not too sure of their gender identity, but likes to dress of the opposite sex. So it's just really, really well done. And I know the author themselves is confirmed to be asexual as well as one of the other characters in this manga series. So yeah, definitely pick it up. Our Dreams at Dusk, absolutely fantastic read. Oh yeah, and um, you will cry. End of volume four, tears, flooding. It's a mess. Get your napkins now, because you're not going to have enough tissues to wipe the tears. We'll end this on a more fun note, though. We have 
Komi-san cannot communicate. The manga has been out for quite some time, but it only started getting translated last year, and this year more than ever, oh my gosh, we had so many volumes come out this year, there's no way I couldn't just not talk about Komi-san. Komi-san is a delightful manga, I typically, well, Back when there wasn't any Rona, I used to read it a lot on my commute over to school, on the bus, you know, or like during all my lunch break and stuff. I would always be picking up this manga. It's a very quick read. It's a four coma manga, so makes sense. There are some volumes that I was able to finish in a day. There are currently 10 volumes out right now, but this here I'm holding is um, volume nine, and they get translated very quickly. I'd say every three months, roughly. I get Viz Media is always on top of their game when it comes to translating. Actually, now I'm curious. Is what Koi Yen Press because it took so many years for this to come out. Oh no, it's Kodansha Comics. Okay, never mind. There have been times where I was feeling very, very anxious, just like Komi, because for those of you who don't know, Komi san is about a girl who has extreme anxiety, specifically social anxiety, and but her goal is to have 9,900 friends, whatever it was, I think it was 99 friends, but her goal is to have uh, 99 friends. So she ends up having the help of the main character and the main character he's able to understand her he kind of gets her has a small crush on her but it's more about the friendship than it is of the romance and she ends up befriending more friends and they get to see all the funny scenarios that they get into especially when it comes to Komi and her beauty uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's funny stuff I, it's, it's just a delightful read and I, I again I read this manga before when I was like feeling very anxious I was kind of panicking a little bit. I wasn't having a full-blown panic attack, but I was like, you know, very anxious. I just read the manga and I just, I felt really calm. It's just a delightful read. Definitely pick it up. And those are all my recommendations. Hopefully if Kowloon Generic Romance gets translated next year, then I'll be recommending that manga again. What are some manga series that you've read this past year? Any ones that you definitely recommend? Any ones that I should totally read? And please make sure you check out Monthly Manga Cast. The next episode, in fact, is going to be streamed with you guys as a special guest as we talk about the latest chapters that came out this past month for Boku no Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, Lore Olympus, and Kowloon Generic Romance. I also am starting a Twitch channel, so make sure you click on the link in the description to go check that out. That's where I will be doing live read-throughs of Jujutsu Kaisen and Lore Olympus. I also want to give a very special shout out to Sarah Hogan for donating to my Patreon. If you look a very special shout out in the next video, stream, or what have you, then please click on the Patreon link in the description to donate, as well as links to my social media. I'm your female otaku, sayonara.